Dan Murphy and Pete Thamel over at ESPN released a very eye-opening, I guess is the best way to put it, report on ESPN.com about the latest with the Michigan NCAA investigation into sign stealing. So quickly, because I know a lot of you have been at church, living your lives, and yet been paying attention and updating ESPN.com every hour, what we have here is they have gotten their hands on a draft of a notice of allegations that is going to be sent over to Michigan. A draft. They didn't even leak the actual thing. A draft. So more on that in a second. Uh, It was specified in this report this could change, as drafts often do. It could change. Sharon Moore could be in the crosshairs here. Could be suspended. Could get himself a show cause. That's the new head coach, by the way, at Michigan, because a lot of the guys who are you know, highlighted in this thing, Jim Harbaugh and the like, they're off to coach the Chargers now. And the NCAA doesn't have much oversight over college athletics. They have zero oversight over the NFL. Uh, there are some deleted texts that Sharon Moore <laughs> – deleting texts. There are some deleted texts that Sharon Moore is – accused of uh, having with Connor Stallions that were recovered and then turned over. And so all of that is detailed in the report. You can go read that if you want to right now. I want you to listen to this line, and then I'm going to take you down a few roads I don't think you're going to be taking down many other places. The school, the University of Michigan, is facing a level one charge for, quote, a pattern of noncompliance, unquote. Okay, so, hey, I watched Pony Excess just like the rest of you. It's my favorite 30 for 30 as well. That's Pony Excess language. That's SMU in the 80s language. Let me uh, spoil the ending for you. Nothing like that's about to happen in Michigan. So stop. I'm looking at the live chat. Go ahead and stop if you're going to start that. However, this is the way you talk, and these are the sorts of things you leak if you mean business. Now, there are people around Michigan who are chuckling at this. There are people around Michigan who are steadfast that not much is going to come of this. Their best guess would be, hey, maybe Sharon sees a game suspension, and you know, maybe we have to probation here, or maybe we have to fine ourselves there, but they really don't think much is going to come from this. There are people on the other ends, predictably in Columbus, Ohio, or State College, Pennsylvania, East Lansing, you know, heard some, heard some drumbeat from around there today that this is going to be very serious. Let me just promise you one thing. You haven't been wasting your time here. Colin, throw up the tweet, in fact, because I had to remind some folks of this today. On November 1st, 2023, I got my hands on some footage. Don't worry about where I got it from, but I shared it with you. Half of you thought I was joking because of the phrasing I used on Twitter, but you're looking at it, and if you can't see, if you're listening on podcast, I said, Pate State Investigates, and I trademarked that because it's a half-decent name for a search firm, Pate State Investigates has acquired the following video, Wait for the Blue Light. And it's Connor Stallions. It's it's the former Michigan assistant, Connor Stallions, but he's not wearing a Michigan hat. He's wearing a Central Michigan hat. He ain't on the Michigan sideline. He's on the Central Michigan sideline. And you know what? He's not supposed to be there. And what we saw was we saw a pair of sunglasses, even though it was a night kickoff, and we saw a little blue light on those sunglasses. Those are recording Those are recording video. Those glasses were recording video. I told you this November 1st because we had the footage here November 1st. We acquired it. Pate State Investigates acquired it. We got called liars. Hey, guess what popped up in this report today from Pete Thamel and Dan Murphy some, I don't know, nine months later. The draft also states the NCAA has gathered evidence that shows Stallions was on the sideline at Michigan State's season opening game against Central Michigan. Stallions was wearing a bench pass, Central Michigan coaching gear, and a disguise, according to the draft, which states that Stallions' conduct, quote, seriously undermined or threatened the integrity of the NCAA collegiate model. The draft does not say how Stallions obtained a bench pass for the Chippewa sidelines. Now, I'll tell you, even I don't know how he got on the sideline. I just know that he was on the sideline, and we've known it since last November. So congrats to investigators for catching up there. Was that the only time that the only time he pulled that off? It's one of the questions I have because um, I've heard rumors to the contrary, but I don't have evidence of it. If I did, I'd share it on the show. I had evidence of that. That's why I shared it with you in November. Next, this timing is very suspicious. The leak is very suspicious. Make no mistake, whether you think Connor Stallions and Michigan are going to have the hammer dropped on them or one or the other will, or none of them will, and it's not a big deal, or maybe you think this is the biggest scandal in your lifetime. 
The NCAA has a lot of motivation for leaking this to who they leak it to, when they leak it. It's 100% tied to that documentary that's about to be released August 27th on Netflix, I believe is the date, it's later this month. You won't have to wait very long. And so I am going to be guarded with what I say about that. I will just tell you the NCAA draft here says that Connor Stallions, quote, failed to cooperate with their investigation. What does that mean? What does it mean he failed to cooperate? You know, I haven't seen it written many places that Stallions was even interviewed by the NCAA. But he was. But he was. So they're claiming, they what, did they try to and he wouldn't talk? Is that what they mean by that? It's very nebulous. Notice it's very vague. Would he not talk at all? Did he talk but stonewall? Did he talk a lot but lie? Were there things you wanted from him that he wouldn't turn over? I'm going to make a bet with you guys. I will bet you when that documentary comes out, there's a lot more to that statement than meets the eye. He wouldn't cooperate. Now, normally, in these sorts of matters, when the NCAA makes allegations, whether it's in an actual notice or whether it's leaked secondhand to a reporter, when they make allegations about you, it's tough for you to fight back. It really is when they say you didn't cooperate in your interview with them, it's tough to fight back. I wonder if Connor Stallions will have a way to fight back on that. Failed to cooperate, by the way, in these sorts of matters is it's not something that you need to just automatically bite the hook of. Be careful on this. Be very careful on this because failed to cooperate could look something like this. I sit down because I stole a ham sandwich from the lunchroom. And they ask me about the ham sandwich and I, I tell them, here are the details. Here's what I did. Here's when I did it. And they got surveillance camera footage of me. It's pretty clear I stole the ham sandwich, okay? So it's a, an open and shut case. But then they ask for my cell phone. Then they ask for my email. Then they ask for my banking information. And I'm like, isn't this about a ham sandwich? I, plus, I already told you guys I just did it. Why do you need that information? Don't worry about that, Josh. Just give it to us. Well, no, I'm not giving it to him. He's failing to cooperate. He's a non-cooperative witness. Shame on him. Be careful is all I'm saying. Demonizing folks for not cooperating with the NCAA. Sometimes these people understand that it's a one-way fight. Sometimes, and I'm not sitting here defending Connor Stallions, trust me. But I'm just saying in a very general sense, Michigan or Boise State. These folks at headquarters in, in Indianapolis, they still think it's 1997, first off. So they, they believe that they can wage wars in this manner. They still believe it's as simple as leaking to a cooperative reporter. And that's no shade on the reporters. I'd do the same thing Thamela Murphy did if this got dropped in my lap. But what I'm telling you is they think it's as easy as let's leak there and let's get out in advance of whatever else is going to come out. And that's it. And we can control the narrative. No, you can't. You suck at this. The NCAA is terrible at this. I'll bet you something else. Bet number two of this segment. I got a really good feeling. These aren't Friday Night Lions locks, but I got a really good feeling that we're going to be vindicated on this. Uh... What you say if I told you the NCAA may have a whole lot more egg on their faces before this is all said and done than the University of Michigan does? What say you to that? So that's two bets if anyone wants to take me up on those. Uh, failed to cooperate. Be careful how you read that. Does anyone, by the way, just a side note here, it has nothing to do with the investigation itself. It strikes me how no one at NCAA headquarters in Indianapolis seems particularly concerned that details about one investigation into one university keep leaking at a very disproportionate ratio to investigations in other universities. Does anyone find that odd? Does anyone care? Does anyone at NCAA headquarters care that the details of your investigations keep becoming compromised and thrown out into the public arena, or are you complicit in that happening. And if you are, you'd never admit it to me, but I have to baselessly then speculate as to why you may be okay with that. Uh, let's get some things straight here. There's a big difference, switching gears entirely, there's a big difference in Connor Stallions acted alone, which I'm pretty sure he did, versus nobody knew. Of course you guys knew. If you're, if you're asking me to believe Connor Stallions acted alone, I'm cool with that. Rogue behavior, I'm fine with it. And even if that's not true, you'll be able to pass that off as true. And for the record, I do believe it's true. But if you're asking me to believe no one else knew there, you're asking me to believe you're idiots. And the folks at Michigan are not idiots. 
So many of those folks had at least some understanding of what was going on there. And anyone who suggests otherwise is expecting me to be stupid enough to believe that. I'm not stupid enough to believe that. I've got no source whatsoever, nor do I have any idea on how severe punishments could be on this. And uh, I wish I knew. I don't know. The severity of the punishment, though, is directly tied to how motivated the NCAA seems to be to nail something to you. They seem very motivated here. Now, on the other side of this fence, you have a university that is ready, willing, able, and motivated on their own to fully defend themselves. Again, they may think it's 1997 in Indianapolis. It is not 1997 anymore. In 2024, the way this gets handled is university has mega law firm on retainer, and they swing much bigger hammers than you do at NCAA headquarters, and that's why you're fighting wars on 10 fronts and you're getting dominated on all 10 fronts in the courtroom because yours aren't as good as theirs. That's probably how this plays out as well. Does it change anything is really what I keep coming back to. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not trying to be one. What I am is a fan of college football. I cover this sport for a living. I've watched this sport as a passion since I was able to change channels on a television. I've seen investigations come and go before. I've seen wins vacated before. I've seen coaches punished before. I've seen scholarships stripped before. And sometimes I look at it and it changes my perception of a team. Other times I look at it and I laugh. All I can tell you is how I feel about Michigan from last year. You can feel however you want to. I know we're going to have a lot of disagreement on this. There's a world where Michigan does stuff last year that in retrospect taints my opinion of the wins they had. So far, nothing's been put in front of me that does that. I, I don't doubt they did stuff that was underhanded. I don't doubt that what Connor Stallions did was illegal. I don't doubt any of that. Um, I think it was. I think they'll be punished to some degree for it. I don't even care if the NCAA comes out and says, hey, we're stripping you of that win. What did I tell you? I told you if I was a Michigan fan, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't care because I saw it happen. I saw the wins. I was there in the Rose Bowl in overtime when we beat Alabama. I was there in Houston in the national championship. And, oh, by the way, I may have even been there when we beat Ohio State for the third straight year. So I wouldn't care if I'm a Michigan fan because the NCAA can't vacate memories. And secondly, and I'm not a Michigan fan, but I was at all those games too. I stood on the sideline for every one of the games I just listed. I don't think Connor Stallions had anything to do with Michigan being able to put together that fourth quarter drive against Ohio State. I don't. I don't believe Connor Stallions had anything to do with Michigan coming from behind with about five and change left and then trailing Alabama, then getting it done with a stop in overtime. I don't think Connor Stallions had anything to do with that. I don't think he had anything to do with them largely owning Washington in the national title game. I just think they were the better team. I think they found a way. I think a lot of guys had their backs against the wall and they executed, and that's how I'll remember it. If you remember it differently, you go ahead and remember it differently. I just say my strategy on this is going to be I'm going to wait a little bit longer because as I've told you for a while now, I've told you I'm totally open to evidence being tossed out here that's not public yet that could change my mind. Still open to that. I just told you how I feel right now. If there's evidence that I don't know about that hasn't been presented publicly yet that's thrown out there that I look at and say, oh, now that's, that's different than what I've seen so far, I may look back and say, yeah, I acknowledge none of that. That entire season's tainted for me. Now tear down the banner, and I'm tearing it down in my memory. Well, I'm not doing that right now. That's not how I feel about it. However, I don't have to feel any kind of way for Michigan to, to get hit fairly hard on this. And all I'm going to say is when your school, not a coach, you got several coaches facing individual level one violations. Their program is facing a level one violation a pattern of noncompliance. The NCAA, as inept as they may be, as incapable of taking a leak without getting the front of their pants wet as they may be from time to time, they do not throw around phrasing accidentally. So they're throwing that out there for a reason. A pattern of noncompliance as a program means if they're throwing that at you, they intend on it sticking, and they intend on hammering you to some degree. Now here's the other thing I'm going to ask. What's the Big Ten League office going to do about this? I have, and some of you 
yeah, probably actually don't know. 99% of this is handled behind the scenes. Let me just, um, let me assure you, there have been some borderline wars fought behind the scenes, not between universities in the NCAA in the past, specifically in my neck of the woods in the South. It's the league office in the NCAA. Because if you think these programs are worth what they're worth on a day in, day out standpoint from a television media rights perspective, and if you think those organizations who give the NCAA power, okay, the conferences give the NCAA the power it has, if you think they're actually going to let that group stumble into Ann Arbor, Michigan, and strip away a lot of the value that Michigan delivers on Saturday, I think you're crazy. I could be wrong, but I think you're crazy if you believe that's going to happen. Having said that, that's serious language. So I don't know what's going to happen. I do not know. I would encourage you, circle that date, August 27th. Netflix is not paying me to promote this, but I'm very much looking forward to it.